So the first and foremost conclusion from this observational analysis was that in a real-world cohort, Sucubitril valsartan was associated with very large, substantial improvements in disease-specific quality of life. And this was largely driven by a large number of patients in the Sucubitril valsartan cohort experiencing a health status improvement of at least greater than or equal to 20 points, which was measured by the KCCQ, or the Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire. So to really understand the context, the reason for why this analysis was performed, you really have to think about two things in relation to the preceding Paradigm HF trial. Now for those that aren't too familiar with the trial, it was a randomized controlled trial that sought to investigate uh, the differences in terms of cardiovascular outcomes between patients that were prescribed chemical compound LCZ696, what we now refer to as Sucubitril valsartan, versus those patients that were prescribed enalapril. And what the investigators found using a disease-specific measure such as the KCCQ was that at eight months, those patients in the Sucubitril valsartan arm had less deterioration in their quality of life compared to those that were prescribed in Allopril. Now, this was an outcome that was measured again at eight months. Now, the uh, thing to really remember here is that one of the shortcomings of Paradigm HF goes back to their pre-randomization protocol. And if you look closely, all patients prior to randomization had to undergo a mandatory intensification period where they were first treated with enalapril and then with higher doses of Sucubitril valsartan to confirm their tolerability prior to them having been randomized. It was only after the randomization period that they were first uh, assessed in terms of their health status. Now, this poses a little bit of a problem because if you're trying to assess short-term health status benefits of this agent, you really want to compare the outcome assessment to a true baseline. And arguably, the true baseline health status for these patients was way before uh, the intensification period. And so that was one major issue that we needed to address in order to truly identify short-term benefits of Sucubitril valsartan in our cohort. The second issue is that Paradigm HF was a randomized control trial. And with the limitations of a randomized control trial, all patients were exposed to very stringent uh, criteria, and they were monitored under a closer supervision. Compare that to CHAMP HF, the centerpiece of our analysis, where patients were monitored in a real world observational registry, giving clinicians a clear understanding of the benefits of an agent such as the Cubitrol valsartan in a real world cohort. And those are kind of the two primary reasons as to why this analysis is uh, substantial and very complementary, uh, impactful to the medical community. So to really understand the study design, again, you have to recall that CHAMP-HF is an observational registry. And what that means is that unlike a randomized controlled trial, where patients are randomized to receive one of two different treatments, patients in an observational registry are being treated by different physicians under many different uh, settings, and they're being prescribed medications at different periods of time. And so, as you can imagine, if we're comparing two different kinds of patients, two different treatment arms, those treatment arms may be different in terms of their clinical characteristics. And so, to really level out those two treatment arms, we have to propose what's called a propensity analysis, where we match patients uh, based on certain characteristics, and we assess for an appropriate match after the, afterwards using what we call standardized differences. So this was a propensity matched analysis where we matched one patient that was prescribed Sucubitril valsartan to two patients that were prescribed uh, uh, essentially uh, no Sucubitril valsartan. So they were in the no ARNI cohort. And we took all of those matched patients and then subjected them to a linear regression analysis where our outcome was change in KCCQ over time. And uh, that was the primary way by which we conducted this analysis. Notably, patients uh, in the CHAMP HF registry uh, were included across the entire US, so very heterogeneous population, minimal uh, inclusion criteria, which increases the generalizability of our findings uh, due to the more heterogeneous population that was included in the registry. Our findings, after having conducted the analysis, were number one, uh, when we look at change in KCCQ score, we really have to first understand how the KCCQ, this health status instrument, is scored. So plus five, plus 10, and plus 20 point improvements are considered small, moderate, and large improvements in health status. Now what we first found after we performed our linear regression analysis were that those patients in the ARNI cohort experienced on average about six points uh, of a health status improvement over the course of an average of 32 days compared to those in the no ARNI cohort, those that were not prescribed Sucubitril valsartan, that experienced an average of about three and a half point improvement. So here again, you're looking at the average benefit uh, across both across each individual group over that period of time. 
And uh, this is a little different than what I just described for the small, moderate, and large point improvements for the KCCQ. So to that end, what we next went to do is uh, assess the different proportions of patients that experienced 5, 10, and 20 point improvements. And that's where we saw the real compelling data, where a very large, substantial number of patients in the ARNI cohort, those prescribed Sucubitril Balsartan, experienced greater than or equal to 20 points over those that were in the no ARNI cohort. What that translates to is that for one patient to experience a at least moderate health status improvement greater than or equal to 10 points, about 16 patients would have to be treated with this medication. Uh, similarly, for one patient to experience a large health status benefit of greater than or equal to 20 points, as assessed by the KCCQ, approximately 11 patients would have to be treated. So these are relatively small number needed to treat. And what this really means is that we've taken uh, a uh, drug such as Sucubitril Valsartan, whose efficacy has been shown in a randomized controlled trial, and we brought it closer to the clinical setting and applied it to an individual patient. So it further contextualizes the meaning and the significance of this agent for an individual patient that has received care uh, within a clinic. So moving forward, what we have to remember is that we have performed this observational analysis, this registry within this observational uh, data set, and it complements what we have learned from the Paradigm HF trial. So moving forward when it comes to a guideline recommendations and implementation of the clinical practice, we have to uh, bear in mind that even though both Paradigm HF and uh, um, and CHAMP HF uh, had their own limitations, we have seen strong signals uh, in terms of health status improvement from both. And so what I would encourage providers to consider is that in those patients that are having um, heart failure symptoms, uh, aside from the cardiovascular mortality and rehospitalization benefits of Sucubitril Balsartan, it poses a very strong potential to improve patients' health status, their symptoms, function, and quality of life, which is the second and equally as important goal of heart failure management. To um, add on to the research that we are currently doing, what we have to really understand is who are the patients that are benefiting tremendously uh, as opposed to less so from Sucubitril Valsartan. In order to do that, we need to perform a heterogeneity of treatment yeah. analysis where we further define patients based on their clinical sociodemographic characteristics to really understand which patient is the one that is more ideal to prescribe Sucubitril Valsartan alone just for the health status benefit. So while we have already discussed that from a cardiovascular mortality and heart failure hospitalization standpoint, all patients may have an improvement, we want to be very selective at times about those patients that may, um, may experience a health status improvement as well. And that's why we want to further understand who are the patients that are experiencing these benefits so that we can bring the research that we have seen from Paradigm HF and from this analysis and to bring it closer closer into inpatient care and outpatient care.